Hey everybody, time for another Five on Friday. You ask the questions, I'll answer them. Uh, how busy have you been? I've been busy beyond belief. You know, so busy that I haven't been able to do a video a week. I apologize for that. I try to do these every Friday, but sometimes we just get so busy, especially in April and May in this landscape business. It's insane. So uh, I'm ready. I hope you are. Here we go. All right, question number one comes from Yard Barbers. How do you keep employees around? I have to say, first of all, it's the hiring process. When you hire somebody, you have to do your job. You have to work real hard to hire the right person to begin with. I've got people that have been with me for 10 years. I've got people that have been with me for five years. And I've got some people that have been with me two, three years. And I think the key to keeping them around is, number one, Hiring the right people, which is a whole topic in and of itself. Knowing what you're looking for in an employee is very important. So when you're putting that ad out there or you're trying to talk people into coming and work for your company, making it crystal clear as to what the job entails. Once they get in the door, you need to set the standard right away. So when they walk into your office or they walk into your building or they walk into your shop or your garage or wherever you happen to work, is it neat? Is it organized? Is it nice? I think I've talked about this before. Uh, I think the most important thing is setting that tone right off the bat with your employees. Uh, potential employees and employees that have been around for a while. Once they get started, how do you keep them? Because that's the bottom line of the question here, right? Once they are working for you, do you have job descriptions? Do you have an employee's manual? Those are kinds of things that are going to set the tone for those employees so that they know this is what's expected of me. I'm going to be a foreman. I'm going to be a crewman. These are the specifications of what I have to do on a daily basis. How am I supposed to dress? Look at the employee's manual. It should tell you. Then the next thing is holding them accountable, rewarding them, you know, holding up carrots. Hey, if you do this, I can give you a raise. Don't just give raises. You know, give them a reason for the raise. Make them work towards it, and it'll give them something to work for. People want to grow. People want to grow as individuals. People want to be recognized. When they do a good job, recognize what they did. Call them up. Or if you're working with them, say, hey, I just saw that you did a great job over there. You did a great job cutting out that tree ring. You did a great job weed whacking or edging or whatever it is. Those lines look boss. Make sure that you tell them that. It's super important. Next, don't treat them like garbage. Don't treat them like crap. People want to be treated with respect, okay? When they do something wrong, hold them accountable. You should have a process, okay? A verbal warning, written warning, and then maybe you're going to say, listen, third strike, and we're going to have a serious talk. You may lose your job. People need to know this is a career path. This is what's going to happen if I do the right thing. If I do the wrong thing, I'm going to have consequences as well. Other things to do, have employee get-togethers, have a party. Uh, if you can't afford to do that kind of stuff, pick up pizza. You know, pick up some drinks for them. Take some coffee in the morning. Try and do something to build a relationship with them because they're your employees. They're the people that make your business go. So Tony's Lawn Care asks, have you guys ever busted out a window? If so how often does it happen and what do you do to prevent it? That's a great question because guess what? I just got a bill today for $700 for a window that uh, one of my crews broke out in a car in a parking lot. I do not like having to pay for that. And listen, it happens in our industry, okay? So I think the important thing here is to realize that, you know what, we made a mistake, it happened, we're going to take care of it, we're going to pay for it. I think preventing that kind of stuff is just an awareness. It's, a, it's an awareness, it's a thought process, it's a culture of your company to be constantly on the lookout and trying not to damage things. So I think that you need to, as an owner, instill that. Again, it's like we talked about with the first question. What are you doing to prevent that in your company? Are you having weekly safety meetings? Are you talking about damages? Are you talking about things like that with your employees? Bottom line is, I think you really need to be vigilant and make sure that you're constantly on top of discussing things like damages, talking about injuries, things like that, because it's going to make your company better. Mudball1224. How many hours do the crews work? Do you keep overtime to a minimum? And are any employees on salary? Yes, we keep overtime to a minimum. Uh, we are a maintenance company. My company does primarily commercial maintenance, so I try to keep my overtime to a bare minimum. I try to set up the route so everybody has a 40-hour route so that we can get things done in an efficient way so that the crews don't have to work overtime, uh, and I try to do the best I can at that. As far as uh, how many hours the crews work, 40 to 45 a week. Okay, that's what I try to keep them at. In the spring, it might be a little more. In the summer, it might be a little less. Our average, I try to average it out, 
you know, about 42 hours maybe throughout the whole year. Now that might be different with the design build company because you're constantly, as you work, you're billing. Whereas me, I get paid the same amount no matter whether we work a lot or work a little. So we have to be careful and set up our routes so that the guys work 40 hours, get done, get home, and uh, come in the next morning. NW Lawn Dog says, how do you decide when to add accounts to a specific crew without overburdening your best guys? Good question. You know, what we try to do is keep, like I said a minute ago, we try to keep our routes to 40 hours. Uh, we have a couple routes that are lighter, so we try to keep those a couple routes open so that we can add accounts to those jobs if possible. Also, if somebody has a job and there's a new uh, property that comes up next door, it's a smaller one or whatever, we can just throw that in on some of the, some of the routes. Uh, it's a case by case, it really is. A lot of times we give, give the extra work to the best guys because they do the best job and they get it done in the most efficient time. But then you're kind, of, you're kind of punishing them for doing a great job. So I try not to do that. I try not to do it. I'm not saying we don't do it ever, but we try not to do that because you're just going to get them disgruntled. They're going to get upset. You know, they're doing a great job as it is. They're efficient as it is. So, you know, we try to not overburden them and say, all right, you know, now that you're doing such a great job and you're getting everything done in your time, we're going to add more to your route. I try to not do that just because I think it's important that the guys have what they have and they do a good job at what they do and they're not getting overburdened with extra work or getting punished because they did a good job. All right, I got one more here. I'm sorry, I'm not going to get to all of these today. I'm trying to keep it to five because that keeps the videos to a minimum. So uh, if you ask the question, I didn't get to it, I still have them. I'll get to it either next time or in the next couple videos. Okay, finally, I am going to answer this. John Boy's Lawn Service. Uh, what's your turnover rate on mower equipment? Do you keep mowers under warranty and trade them in and keep newer equipment or just run them until you need a new one? We try to keep our mowers as long as possible. I know that there's other companies, they use them for two years, turn them over. Um, in my particular company, I try to keep my mowers for as long as I can. Having said that, once they get around 2,000 hours, uh, you know, you're going to start getting nickel dime to death, so you have to watch out for that. Two cycle equipment's a little different because Unfortunately, with that, we use it, we use the heck out of it, and we usually end up, after a couple of years, having to replace that. With the bigger equipment, the mowers, trailers, trucks, we got to be vigilant. We try to be very vigilant, make sure we pull maintenance on them, and uh, make sure that they stay in good working order, because that is really something that can hurt you financially uh, if you let it get out of, out of control. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. We will see you next time and I will get to more of your questions. In the meantime, have a great week. We'll see you next time. Keep rocking.